It's Wednesday, October 11th. I'm Matt Harmon. Welcome to Eckler's Edge, presented by Toyota, part of the Yahoo Fantasy Football Show. It's a hell of a day to talk ball. And joining me to do just that is, obviously, Los Angeles Chargers running back, Austin Eckler. Austin, what's going on, buddy? You know, Matt, usually, you know, I jump into Eckler's Edge and I'm really excited to, like, you know, get in there and get a show going. But um, before we do that, I got some beef with you, my friend. You got have, beef with me? I officially have beef with you. Yes, it is official. <laughs> and you, oh, the listeners, why? Why? Well, okay, you know, I have my my trusted co-host on here, Matt Harmon, who's making these bold predictions, you know, as we mm-hmm. know, every single week. And so I'm like, all right, you know, my quarterback's on by and, you know, I need a quarterback. So uh, what are we going to go do? We're going to, you know, trust Matt. You know, he's like, hey, this, you know, this, this uh, um, Zach Wilson guy, I think he's going to have a game against the Broncos. You're like, you know what, Matt? I oh, think you're geez. right, man. I think you're right. So guess what I do? I go and I put Zach Wilson in the game. And, well, obviously we know how that game turned out. So, uh, you know, that's that's why I got some beef with you, man. Now I am no longer undefeated. No longer well, undefeated. Okay. So many things about what you're saying right now are, <laughs> are, are uh, I'm not going to say complete BS, but like BS adjacent. Um, <laughs> did I use, uh, you know, reverse psychology, tactical mind games to get you to, to pick up Zach Wilson with Justin Herbert on by so that you could get your first loss before our big matchup in week six? I'm not going to say yes. I'm also not going to say no. I've consulted with my legal team on this, and and they have advised <laughs> me to not, uh, you know, to basically plead the fifth, not not admit wow. any any culpability. Wow. But All listen, right. I was just taking notes out of your out of your book, man. Like <laughs> okay. both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but just, that's fair know, enough. Deep deep six, the bold prediction, man. Uh, fair for, forget about it. Yes, yes. I'm, I apologize to anyone that's taken any of my bold predictions and actually acted upon it, which I don't think you could have because I don't think any of the players I've talked about are probably available. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, you got me there. You got me there. All right, I'm, I'm ready to have a great show now. I had to get that off my chest. Well, listen, man. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about Austin's team uh, taking his first loss in fantasy in this league a little bit later. We'll get to that. Uh, the Zach Wilson disaster. And, and look, man, I mean, listen, I tell you Zach Wilson's going to have a day. That is the definition of a bold prediction. OK, the, the guys had maybe I, I put my faith in it, man. I put it in. I was like, you know what? You're right. This guy's about to turn it on. And hey, they won the game. They won they the, game. the game. I will give them that. They got it done. Um, but you know, as we know in fantasy, um, we have our little biases that we want our guys to not only get the job done on the field, but also have a killer game as well. Did you catch any, um, Brees Hall runs from, from that game at all? I I know the Broncos run defense is mm, suspect, but my God, dude, that guy looks back, back Brees Hall. Man, that's what we saw from him, man. Like his, his first year, he was averaging like six yards, even, even maybe seven yards a carry. Um, you know, he was just, you know, Brees the Beast. You know, I heard that that name thrown around a little bit. And so, yeah, it seems like he's back in in full swing of him himself. So excited to watch him continue to tear it up. Yeah, and that's, until he plays see. us. Until he plays well, us, of course. Yes. Naturally, naturally. Um, it was great to see just because I know, you know, he's coming back from a serious injury. Uh, the coaching staff even said, it's so nice, by the way. When you're playing fantasy and you're trying to, you know, you're maybe betting on football, you're making decisions. And I say this as somebody who maybe bet on the over on Brees Hall carries uh, going into that Broncos game. Like, it's nice when the coaching staff says, yo, no more pitch count for this guy. And there's that. That was actually the truth uh, on Sunday. Like, that was the stone cold truth of the matter. Great to see that for Brees Hall, who's one of the most electric running backs in the league when he's on. Um so, yeah, just you coming back from that injury, starting to see the best of him. I think maybe to my eye, Austin, it hasn't always been um, all the way there when he's like trying to go laterally. It's mostly just when he shot out of a cannon downfield. But I, again, I think we're starting to see the best of Brees Hall, which is good to see. And I think this actually transitions perfectly into our next topic here. The first thing we're going to talk about, Jonathan Taylor, talk about a guy who's back. Mm. Uh, he's back on the field. Mm. He's also uh, backing up the Brinks truck, maybe. Uh, <laughs> getting that. <laughs> I was pretty rough transition, but I'm doing my best here. Uh, he signs a new <laughs> deal. Three years up to $42 million contract with 
26 and a half million being fully guaranteed. He's now one of the highest paid running backs in the NFL. I think I saw this note from Schefter that Taylor becomes the first running back to land a long-term deal north of 10 million or more since freaking Nick Chubb signed in 2021. That was almost 800 days ago, Austin. I, 800 days ago, 2021. Well, it was well be a thousand years ago at this point. That feels like forever ago. Uh, so yeah. essentially re- resets the market. Um, I don't know. I'm curious. What was your initial reaction to the news? Because I didn't see this one coming. Yeah, uh, I don't think really anyone did. And uh, it, it seemed like there was going to be something that had to happen. Right. Where it's like there's like this tension. And, you know, are they going to sign him back? Are they going to trade him? Is he going to play on his, you know, his last year of his contract right now? And, you know, the news broke. And, you know, I'm immediately jumping in. Um uh, you know, my, my, my text message, I hit him up and I, I loved his press conference after, um, I don't know if it was after it announced the, uh, the deal, but his press conference coming back where he was just really focused on just on the important things, um, the important things, which are, Hey, his health and then coming back and participating for, for his team. And I loved how he, he kept it very professional. He didn't talk about, you know, any of the situation really, or, or putting anyone down or, or making it personal. It was just more so on, Hey, let's continue to contribute as an individual. Uh, but yeah, absolutely love the fact that hey our guys are going out there and continue to you know you know get what they deserve uh when you're that pivotal in an offense and what he's been able to do um and what he'll continue to do for that offense it's like yeah you should just like any other position that is having that type of impact get compensated for that um and for him to be able to do that and i think i think something that's been um going on in our league too or not our league our position is there's a lot of established guys that have been around for for a minute now and it was really my class you know, the Aaron Jones, Chris McCaffrey, uh, you know, me, Nick Chubb, um, you know, it even goes back a little bit before that. But there's been a lot of guys in these positions that have been holding on to. And I think that's maybe played a factor into, you know, the newer contracts. There just hasn't been maybe as that high caliber guys that have been able to push the market or had the right timing to push the market. But right. And that's why there was this big uproar this year. It's because a lot of that timing aspect was this was this last year when these guys had just come into free agency. And so then it's like, it didn't happen, the new contracts. And we were like, whoa, what the heck? Why are they not happening? And so for us to see one, one bigger contract up at the top of the market for a guy that's been playing at the top of his game is amazing. And we want to see more of that. And it's up to us as running backs to continue to play at a high level. And for these young guys that are coming up on the timing of their contract to continue playing at a high level too. So um, excited to see him continue to get back into it. You know, uh, I don't expect him to, all of a sudden be, you know, his, his Superman runs right out the back. But uh, I know he's going to build up into it. And I'm looking forward to watching him. Yeah, that's a really good point that I hadn't considered about um, sort of just maybe a gap there in the running back position in terms of guys that had hit the because it is all about timing, right? Like yep. when you hit the market, if you can even hit the market. But if you just get to that point where you can negotiate a new contract and you have that leverage, it is about like the timing of it, right? Like, did you hit it with the perfect momentum? And because I'm looking at it now, Johnson Taylor is averaging $14 million per year, uh, according to over the cap.com. That puts him third at the running back position. And he's sandwiched between McCaffrey, who's 16 million and, you know, kind of like stands is a little bit above himself because he's just, I mean, what a freak show. Yeah. Um, you know, he's 27 years old. Kamara, you mentioned he's from that 2017 class, yep. too. He's 28 years old. Derrick Henry's 29. You know, Nick Chubb is 28. And, and like all these other guys, then it's, it, you know, Aaron Jones is 29 years old. Uh, Josh Jacobs on the franchise tag. Well, franchise re-altered type yep. deal. So Joe Mixon was is, in there, too. Yeah, Mixon yep. was in that class as well. He's a little bit further down because they re- re- yeah, renegotiated. His, yeah, yep. renegotiated. But yeah, so I think if we could see some of these guys like and, and it, it's interesting too for Taylor because he wasn't one of these guys that hit it at the right time either because he was banged up all last year, missed these first four games and his backup. And we can talk about this in just a second. But like his backup was having a nice little run to start the year. But I think. The Colts must have seen a lot of what you see in him as a player. I think what we all see in him as a player, but also it must be a credit in my mind. You know, we had him on the show last year. Must be a credit to him as like a dude as well inside the building. Yeah, I, look, you can have guys that are back. Like people can pop off. Like I, I used to do it all the time, right? That's how I ended up getting a contract. Um, but when you got guys that you know what their ceiling is and you've seen it, you know, year after year or, you know, game after game, season after season, that's what you're paying for. You know, you're not paying, you don't want to have this in, indecisive or inconsistent where it's like, this guy has potential. We don't always see it, but we know maybe it's there. Like you want guys that know this guy brings it and it's every single week. And that's what you're paying mm-hmm. for. You're paying for that consistent 
high level of play. And it doesn't mean, you know, backups can't have a great game. They absolutely can. And that's how new opportunities are created for people. Um, and that's how we find new players throughout the entire the entire league. And what makes it, you know, have such a high level of turnover is we have newer players that are coming in every year competing for spots. Um, but when you're a guy, just like any position, you know, and you play at a high level that is as above, right, this, this general, like, oh, you played well. A lot of guys mm-hmm. play well, but are you playing exceptional? And then do you do it? year after year and if you do is this where we see things like this jonathan taylor's you know and all these other contracts you know including including myself um jumping into that mix as well and so that's what it's about that's what it's about and so when you have backups like that guess what they're creating an opportunity for themselves maybe on that team or somewhere else in the league um and that's that's what's great about the sport is it's so highly competitive because we're all trying to do that we're all trying to play at a high level as consistently as we possibly can and you know we're compensated for it if we do and so it's it's a great place because you get a you get to build yourself as a player and guess what you're gonna learn the harsh tr- harsh truth uh, about what the ownership feels about you you know regardless if you mm-hmm. agree with it or not you know as an individual or even a group shoot the a whole NFLPA the whole nation might disagree with you but if the owners aren't willing to pay and they're all together on it and they feel the same way then guess what they're you know as we saw with the running backs they're not gonna let you get it and so you know I was I was so happy to see. Um, you know, one of our guys at least get one of those top contracts that was definitely deserved. I'm hoping to see a couple more as, you know, some of these other guys hit free agency in these next couple of years. Um, you know, including myself this year. Like, I got a lot to go prove, right? I've only played one game this year, but I got to get out there and continue to play at a high level so that I can show, like, yeah, Austin still got it. And he deserves, you know, some type of contract that's towards the top of the market. Yeah, I think the way this conversation, frankly, like devolved over the course of the offseason was kind of really unfortunate. Uh, from like a media standpoint and some of the fans standpoint, I know, you know, sometimes it's like you just need one example for the rest of the league to work off of. We see this with quarterback contracts all the time, too, right? Like this offseason, it was all right. Who's going to go first? Is it going to be Jalen Hurts? Is it going to be Joe Burrow? Is it going to be uh, Justin Herbert? Is it going to be Lamar Jackson? Right. And then, you know, Jalen Hurts signs his deal. Lamar signs his deal. J- Herbert signs his deal. Burrow signs his deal. So maybe we see something kind of cascade here at the running back position. Now that we have an example with a really good player like Jonathan yeah. Taylor. Yeah, that's a great point it's a great point yeah and timing timing is everything and so it's going to be happen again literally this off season we have a lot of all that my entire class we're all going to be free well most of us anyway and so there's going to be <laughs> there's going to be a lot of situations you know almost like like dalvin's where it's like what's going to happen to this guy like how did he play um did he have a great year and then you know i got it maybe not like Dalvin's. Dalvin's kind of interesting um mm-hmm. but yeah it's going to be a shuffle that's going to be very very intriguing to to kind of see how it plays out yeah, it's going to be fascinating. Um, sticking in the Colts real quick here, you mentioned like we'll see when JT gets fully ramped up. It wasn't on Sunday, right? He plays 10 snaps. His his backup, like I said, Zach Moss, plays 49 snaps. Austin, I actually have Zach Moss on like a lot of fantasy teams, including in our Eckler's Edge League. And it's one of those things where I'm sitting there on Sunday like, oh, my God, you know, they say they're going to split the carries. Um, you know, I know that JT's coming back from uh, recovering from this injury. How much are they going to use him? Like, I did the thing where I played him in like half the leagues and not the other, which just then I'm I'm setting myself up to be fifty percent right. disappointed. Which Either is whatever. Way, yeah, yep. yeah. It's not it's not about me, even though it is about me. It's not about me. Um, <laughs> I think it is pretty cool. And if I'm the Colts, I see what Zach Moss is doing, like a guy that didn't perform with his first team, but has started to stack some really good performances in Indianapolis, and just think like, man. Yeah, Zach Moss, who looks like he's playing well, is giving us this. When Taylor gets sprinkled into here, like we can just maybe think about taking this thing up another level. If I'm Indy, that's how I'm thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you see it play out, you know, in a couple of different scenarios where, you know, you've had these backs that can help each other and you don't have to rely on one, um, solely just one. I think, you know, you know, with Zeke and and Pollard, you know, I think that was a good opportunity to see like, oh, these guys are both dynamic. Um, the guys can both play at a really high level. And I think honestly, you know, whether we like it or not as running backs, it definitely helps us out. Um, when you have two guys that can be trusted there because then, you know, you don't have to take the every single snap because, you know, other than the quarterback, we get the ball more than anybody. And um, being able to spread that around a little bit definitely helps us out. And I think it keeps us even more fresh, even though it might seem counterintuitive, where it's like, if you get the ball a little bit less, you're going to actually have, in my opinion, more to give because you're going to have more mm-hmm. rest. You're not taking as many blows throughout the rest throughout the game. That definitely affects you. Like, these are large human beings running into us absolutely over time. That, that starts to add up. And so, in the end, I think it's just going to help both of them out, honestly. So I'm excited, like I said, to see see how it plays out. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be great. Uh, one other running back who did shine in week five, Travis Etienne of the Jaguars. Um, pretty incredible stuff. Uh, you know, I know we just want to point out these great running back performances, but I have actually kind of like a fantasy question to ask you about this one. First of all, Travis Etienne took 26 carries for 136 yards and two touchdowns. Also tacked on four catches on five targets for another 48 yards. 30 Massive. touches. Yeah. He's probably feeling it the day after. I can only for sure. For sure. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, massive statement win for the Jaguars um, over there in London. Travis actually tweeted out that he was playing against himself in fantasy, um, which was hilarious. I actually nice. weirdly played against ETN in like three or four leagues, too. Uh, so that was no fun for me. But um, again, it's all about me here. I feel like, man, there was like a. There was a, a few guys, a handful of guys that just was like, if you're playing against these guys, you probably lost kind of thing. I, is that is that typical? Like, I feel like there was a couple pop off like performances this week more than usual, in my opinion. Um, yeah, you you uh, look at it. Um, you're you're not wrong, honestly, about this. Like, and it started on Thursday night with DJ Moore had 45 freaking points. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned ETN. He had 34. Jamar Chase had 44.7. I guarantee you, Austin, there's somebody that had DJ Moore on Thursday night. Usually, like, oh, you get 45 points from some dude on Thursday night. It's like, ah, yeah, I'm set. I don't need to worry about this on Sunday. Then they probably went up against Jamar Chase and Travis Etienne. And right. It's like, what the, what the <laughs> right, right. And they're just so salty. Right. There's the worst scenario. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that definitely happened. But I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you about Travis Etienne specifically. Um, you know, good, good player, obviously, but. There was a lot of talk about him going into this game. Like in fantasy, we typically talk about it like positive regression, right? Where this guy's getting a ton of work, but it hasn't really necessarily popped off in the stat sheet. You know, the game before he has 20 carries, but for just 55 yards, 19 for 88. That's pretty solid. The week before, uh, the week before that, in week two, 12 carries for 40 yards. You know, um, from like an expected fantasy points, this is really getting in the Dorco weeds with you here, Austin, but like from an expected fantasy points, he's up there, but the actual raw points, there's a big gap. So my question to you is, as a player, is there a difference between like, oh man, he's just due, he's just been like unlucky or he's underperforming and how can we on the outside like better spot that? Oh, great question. Amazing question. It literally reminds me back uh, last year for me where it was like I hadn't scored a touchdown in the first three games, had like 20, 30 yards rushing. Like it was atrocious, like one yard mm -hmm. per average carry. And, you know, I'm like contemplating like, what am I, what am I doing wrong? What am I missing? What is going on? And, uh, you know, for me as a player internally, like it was obviously keep working, keep working, trying to get back into a rhythm. Um, and, Really, that's what I, like. There's no real explanation about like why I all of a sudden started getting on like in a flow. Like I, I came out and then my fourth game had like three touchdowns against um, the Texans, and all of a sudden went on this streak of scoring. And it might be just the flow of the first month of the NFL and something mm -hmm. that you see through you know just the NFL in general. Um, actually, we had a you know our team meeting um, this week and. We're talking about like, hey, like we've only watched, we've already had our bye week, so we did our self reflection. We don't really have a lot to reflect on because it's a four first four weeks of the game or season, and the first four weeks I really see as you know like late le late September, early October is kind of like you're getting your feet underneath you. Like, what type of team do we have? Where are we having success with? Who's right playing at a high level? What's working? What's not? And as you go through that. You know, you find, right, these types of runs are working better for us. We want to run more duo. We want to run more gap scheme, wide zone. Um, in the red zone, we like the screen game. Like, there's these things that you're starting to learn about. Now you have four games, so you have some actual evidence of that. And maybe that's what it is. Uh, maybe it was just getting getting a, a feel for for how this season is going to play out for them offensively. And maybe they, I don't, I didn't look into the runs or anything like that, but I'm not sure if they were changing up their runs. You know, there could have been some just mismatches in, you know, in, where it actually benefited uh, with Travis, you know, in this game, and it, he could have just popped off this this game, and it was maybe one of those where it was like a one time thing, and now maybe they're struggling again. The thing is, we don't know, but what we do know is when we get this time in the league and get some games under our feet, um, I think it really starts to help us as as an offense really start to click and understand. Okay, this is what we want to lean on because this is going to be our bread and butter, for, you know, going forward for these next few weeks. That's a good answer, and I think it actually applies a lot to that Jacksonville offense, especially. They're breaking in a new 
like vertical X receiver in Calvin Ridley, who, by the way, hasn't played football for like a year and a half. Right. You, you got to think he's getting his feet under himself. It's like, OK, well, if teams try to take away Calvin, they double him. They shade a safety to his side. We can exploit it with Christian Kirk, or maybe we can run the ball well with Travis. So I think I always say this, we got to be patient and you can almost do anything with like a team or a player in a three or four game sample size. So I thought he made a pretty curious, um, pretty curious case of that. And I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on it. Yeah. And I think it's one of those where, yeah, we know this guy, like we have expectations for this guy. Like he has, he's, you know, he's a starter out there in Jacksonville. You know, he's expect, there's a lot expected of him. And I think you see that within the the organization too. You know, you just talk about those carry counts that he was getting and like, that's a full workload. Um, And so obviously they have, you know, some type of expectation for them to be able to lean on him in in their offense. And, you know, it might, maybe it's just a matter of time. And obviously, you know, he had 30 touches. Um, When you have that many touches, you get that volume. I mean, that's a good guy to have on your fantasy um, over time if they're going to continue to lean on him and he's he better have those types of games right he's got to be able to pop off and have a games like that if they're if they're going to be giving him the, the ball that many times and so I think it was just a matter of time um, uh, for that to eventually happen and you know I'm sure we'll see more of that in the future um, as their offense starts to click a little bit more all right hey well I uh, mentioned Travis tweeted out that he was playing himself in fantasy this week about to Man. be a familiar situation for our guy Austin <laughs> Eckler here, uh, potentially because week six, buddy, it's arrived. The moment is uh, people are saying this is the most important matchup of the NFL season. Not you know um, Bills Dolphins, not even Chargers Cowboys on Monday Night Football. We're not talking about that. <laughs> We're talking about Harmon's Hedge versus I'm too sexy for this league and the league, pal. Austin Eckler is playing against Austin Eckler. Uh, are you you, you going to be out there in week six? Because, buddy, let me tell you what, if you are, you're about to be putting up points against yourself, man, because you're I, on my team. Monday night football, man. Monday night football at that as well. So the prime time game, man. Uh, but, yeah, if, I mean, there's going to be times, there's moments where I play against myself in fantasy. And, you know, it's it's just unfortunate for for my fantasy team that week because, you know, there's some some studs that – you know, we know they're going to go out there and, and play at a high level. And guess what? That's going to convert to fantasy points. And so my team just better be ready. That's all I'm saying. My team better be ready because it's not going to be an easy matchup going against, yeah, Harmon's hedge um, over there on the other side. But I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun game. Um, am I back? Um, I would say really close, like 99% chance, you know, where okay. it's like – it's like for me, I was practicing before the bye week, right? We wanted to use the bye week to get back. And now, I mean, if you're not back and you're already practicing and you had the bye week and you have a whole week before the game and an extra day from Monday night football, it's like, okay, then, you know, what the heck's going on with you? So I think it's, I think it's safe to say that um, AE30 is going to be out there in the field. Hey, hey, we love, we love to see it. Also, <laughs> I would have been raising the alarms like, you know, hey, we, this guy's just trying to miss this matchup because he's not trying to play <laughs> I, himself in this fantasy league. That would have been a uh, clear, clear violation of the code, pal. Right. Um, you know, I, I draft you with some expectations here, and it's that look, the whole point of the show, the whole point of the league is 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 you playing against yourself on my team. Without that, what do there we it have is. here? Exactly. So, this um, is the moments. What did uh. Uh, who said it? We pray for times like this, you know, like it was Meek Mills that said it. Yeah, <laughs> this is it. This is the time. Um, so yeah, I do expect, you know, a highly and well thought out message from, you know, Matt Harbin, you know, telling me how many points he's going to need, just like everyone okay. else sends me. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious, give it to me. Like, what can I expect L- here? You know, listen, obviously, um, you know, this, I'm a real, uh, jerk. Like I'm one of these hardos <laughs> that is going to get in. Oh like, no. I'm yeah, about to block I'm, Matt Harmon. Yeah, you, block block, you, you might have to block me on Instagram. Cause you know, I'm going to come at you with like a awesome. <laughs> I need this also by the way. Well, you know, the, the ironic thing here, and I'm going to have to include this in the DM message is that you are getting Herbert back off of bye week coming off a loss because Herbert didn't play. Well, that's that's part of it, obviously, the whole Zach Wilson thing we talked about. But what I'm going to be specifically saying to you in your DMs, Austin, is, <laughs> hey, I don't want to see any uh, BS nonsense like you're catching ch- check down touchdowns in the red zone. No, no, no. You better sack up and be a man and run that thing in yourself. You tell Herbert from Matt Harmon, no passes to Austin Eckler in, in, the, in the end zone. They all got to be runs. 
That's good. That's good. That is that is something I would expect to see my DMs actually. So um, you're, you're spot on. You're spot on. Is that block worthy, or is that like that's not block worthy? That's not block worthy. Okay. That is that is definitely that's mild. I would say that's constructive. Like there's some logic behind it. Stuff that's block worthy is the personal tax. Like you get your bald, you know, whatever f you oh. back in the field. You you know, sorry piece of you know this and that. Like th- those are block worthy people. Um, but I would say eighty percent are not block worthy. Eighty percent are like, man, I hope you get better. Like I, I could love you, but I need you back on the field. Like those things, you know, we'll accept those. But when it gets personal, um, then it's like, okay, okay, block. So you're good. You're in. The, you're in the clear. Why do they got to go right for the bald stuff, man? <laughs> why, you know? why do they always go for the bald, man? Uh, look, I got I got really thick skin, um, very yeah. thick skin. You're not going to get to me. Um, but yeah, it is. It, it gets ridiculous for sure. But um, hey, I don't know. They, the bald head, you know, it, it's easy to attack, I guess. You know what? I, I got one time. What's um, that? And, and I'm, I'm like, yeah, it's, I couldn't care less. Like pretty thick skin. I've, I've heard it all. And sometimes it. Honestly, it makes me laugh. Like someone told me, like I could kick a field goal through the gap in your mustache, because uh, for <laughs> for oh, whatever no. reason, and you know, if you've watched the show on YouTube or you've seen me anywhere, you know, I like I have this weird, just weird gap right here in the middle. You know, sorry to give you. The I wouldn't say there, it's but. weird. Well, I don't know because I haven't been like, oh my god, you know, Matt with the, you know with the gap. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't even. Anyway, proceed. Anyways, yeah. So I thought that was funny. Uh, it's just like yeah, there's you know, it's like. I could kick a gap. I could kick a field goal through the gap in your mustache for this like BS recommendation, uh, you know, for some wide receiver some yeah. fantasy thing or whatever. So, and and yeah. honestly, that one I was like, you know what? I'm gonna let that slide because that's funny and that's creative. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know why you're out here like <laughs> obsessing about other people's fate, other men's right. facial hair, or other people's facial hair, or anything like that. I, right. I, whatever you you do, you. But yeah, at least you got to give them points for being clever. Yeah. Look, at least that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. There's a lot of stuff in those that even they're saying I'm ball, whatever. Yeah, I'm ball. I get it. okay. We, it's obviously um, a thing, but um, yeah, all the personal like the fu's and all that. And I there's all these people. I always block two people that say like I'm faking an injury. I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, it doesn't even make sense. Like it doesn't make sense. Like I am in a contract year. I have to be on the field to prove that I can still play at a high level. I would, there's no reason I would ever be faking. There's no reason anyone would ever fake an injury in this league. That's not how you get paid. That's not how you get opportunities. And so those people always immediate ban too. Like quit faking and get on the field. I'm like, faking? What the heck are you talking about? If I could run, I'd be running out there, running through people. But I, I know, I, I want to see these people come strap it up and play. I'm like, all right, you come out here and try to play on a, on a high ankle sprain. I want to see you try they'll, to run through They'll there. be faking an injury in five seconds, okay? They'll, <laughs> they'll actually fake an injury if that was the case. Yeah, I've, I've definitely fielded my fair share of, you think Austin's faking this injury? I'm like, no, nah, he's not faking this injury. Anyways, well, does, hey, I'm glad to hear. Sense, yeah. I'm glad to hear that you're feeling better. And, you know, 99% you're going to be out there uh, destroying yourself in fantasy. That's great stuff, man. I uh, yes. can't wait for our matchup this week. We'll uh, we'll have to tweet out the lineup and everything. Like I said, I'm coming off a win. You're coming off a loss. Um, I'm getting my best player back. Clearly, buddy, momentum is all on my side. You might be you might be set for a run. That's true. That's true. But it doesn't start next week. I'm gonna tell you that. Well, what is gonna happen again? <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> Wait, did you win? Get, by the way, I, or did you win? Yeah, this week? yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. three we're, and we're two three, now. Three and three two. two. Okay, Zach Moss, who we just talked about, like the one mm. league where I was like, I gotta play this guy because I don't have any better options because my best running back is faking an injury, obviously, and isn't playing. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> blocked. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm yeah, there's it. the there, there's the block. Yeah, I've been blocked twice by Austin in this episode. <laughs> Had to play Zach Moss. He ended up winning the week for me. So yeah, I, I am coming in off a win. You're coming in off a loss. Like I said, momentum is all on my side. That's it is. I got to bounce back. Uh, all right, you, you're playing the Cowboys. Though. I do just want to real quick. Did you catch any of Sunday Night Football? Yeah, I watched. I watched a little bit. I was at dinner actually. Um, they had it like on the in the background, so I was peeping it every once in a while. Yeah. I'm pretty impressive stuff where there with the 49ers. It's hard to take anything away from from the Cowboys right in that <sighs> game. It's just like a it's like literally a death star. The the 49ers are ridiculous because they have so many players on offense and they're so loaded over there and Purdy's just like pulling the trigger at at such a perfect spot. And that might not even be the best unit on the team. The defense might even be better than the offense. It's it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous what they got over there. Shout out to, you know, whatever they got going on with management with what they've been building and accumulating all these pieces and, and making it work. But yeah, uh, I think it's, you know, 
definitely put credit where credit is due. And they have definitely, you know, for the past, you know, couple of years now have been continuing to build in a direction that is, has definitely been advantageous. And it's like, okay, you play the 49ers, you know, like, Hey, we got it. There's no, there's no not being on your A game. Um, and I think it's great because honestly, I, I think it helps elevate and set the standard um, of mm. not only what teams can look like, but you know, the standard of, you know, playing at a high level, like, Hey, if you're going to match, you got to be able to beat the best to, to be the best. Right. And so now we're looking right now, we're looking at these couple teams that are playing at the highest standard and that's where we have to be. We have to be able to be at a, a place where we have enough talent to match enough consistency to match and enough effort and, you know, want to, to go and actually beat a team like that. Cause there's a lot of, a lot of factors that play into every single football team. Um, and you know, we're in a position with the Chargers right now where like, we're trying to go win this whole thing. You know, it's not like, oh, this is a rebuilding, you know, and like, you're not going to see how it goes. Like, no, we're trying to win. And so we know mm -hmm. we got to be able to beat Dallas. We got we to be able to beat, you know, San Fran. We got to build a team to be able to beat the best, as I said. So I think it it's awesome um, as a competitor because you, you like to see what you need to be and where you need to improve and what you have to beat to beat, you know, because now, you know, if you beat San Fran, you know, you're a real contender, whoever beats San Fran, you know, they're undefeated right now. You know, same with, same with the Eagles. There's a few teams out there where it's like, these guys are at the top right now. And we're trying to, you know, establish ourselves as one of those as well, right? We, we're two and two right now um, with some games that could have swung both ways, you know, in a lot of those scenarios. And so what we're trying to do is, hey, let's let's get on a rhythm. Let's get on a roll, right? It, you don't have to, you're not winning the Super Bowl in September or even October, you know, or even November, right? When you start getting later in the season, your team better start looking a lot better than it was at the beginning. So you can start, you know, playing with everyone. Because like I said, at the beginning of this, when we were talking about, you know, ETN, you know, offenses, defenses, we all get a lot better as it continues to go, as football continues to play. We all get a lot crisper. And so things start to kind of really separate themselves as we continue to go. And um, yeah, 49ers are, are showing, you know, they're going to be contenders again right up front. And uh, I'm excited to eventually get that opportunity to play them. When you see um, a team like Dallas that in previous games had blown out some other opponents, and you, again, you guys get Dallas this week, so I think it's a pertinent question, but you know, they blow out the Giants, they blow out the Jets, they blow out the Patriots, but then they get the doors kind of blown off them against the team that like sets the standard, as you're saying. So when you're, you're watching a team like that that you're about to play, I don't know, what it, what's kind of your reaction to that in a way – are, are there ways that you can pick at those nits or are you like, oh man, that's a sign that we can exploit some of these same things or is it, well, those guys are just like different and it's a different level of competition. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll go back and watch those games. Um, but just understanding just like the facts of, from some of those games where it was a turnover, it was a turnover margin. Um, turnovers are what those games came down to. It seemed like, and not just turnovers, but defense was scoring off of turnovers, right? They had, they've had four touchdowns. And then, you know, I, I saw the box score after Dak had three interceptions yesterday or the other day when they were playing. Um, and just in that case, it's like, okay, what is, what's going to be the success of the, of beating this team? Well, it's not turning the ball over. Can't turn the ball over. Um, and we got to get picks. We got to get some interception. If he's going to give it up, we got to be there. We got to get some fumbles, right? We got to knock the ball out. Um, you know, I think there was even maybe a fumble in there too. You know, we talk about it all the time in our in our organization. You know, Coach Staley brings it up almost every team meeting. Where it's like the the turnover margin, right? If you're trying to be at the top at the end of the year, um, you got to have turnover margin that is very advantageous for yourself, and that's going to help win and lose games. And uh, yeah, that's what it's going to come down to: who has the ball. Who has the ball? Who can take care of it? And who's not coughing it up? And I know their defense is dynamic. They got you know these guys around. You know they got Micah, who's who's the guy. And so if we can continue to contain him, we'll continue to you know keep ourselves in a position where we can hold on to the ball a lot more. Um, and then it, it you know ball security comes down to everybody. It's not just the not just you know the quarterbacks, it's runners as well, and then receivers being in the right spot and not you know not tipping balls and things like that. So yeah, it's. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. I love this on Monday Night Football too because I feel like for both of our teams, there's like both of our teams are like in the media in a spot where we could go either way kind of thing, you know? And for us, it's like, we have to have the vision of seeing us continue to go forward and go on a streak here. And I know that's the vision we have. I know that's the vision they have as well. And so now we're going to go head to head and see, you know, who's actually about it when it comes to playing on Sunday or on Monday. I imagine this game is going to mean a lot for, um, for Kellen Moore too. You guys, offensive coordinator, former offensive coordinator for the Cowboys for you played there too, like basically brought up in the organization. Um, 
I think that's going to be that's that's got to be an interesting spot for him, right? A team that basically was like, all right, thanks for your services, but you can go find the next opportunity. Um, do coaches? Ha- I mean, we're just coming off this whole Nathaniel Hackett thing with the Broncos and how they, you know, Sean Payton said he's the worst coaching job in NFL history, and you could tell. I mean, they literally gave Nate Hackett the game ball after when the Jets won. Like you could tell that meant something to him. I'm that's got to be like the same for coaches as it is for players sometimes too. For sure, for sure, we're human, right? We're human, and so if if someone let you go because maybe they think they can find a better option or, you know, maybe there's something, you know, that is a better fit for them. And then they let you go because of it. Like, yeah, you're going to want to beat them. And I mean, there's levels to it, right? You want to beat them just because you're a competitor, you know, regardless if you're a coach or a player, but then also, you know, there it's not, it's not even, it doesn't even have to be bad blood. It's almost like a, Hey, like, ha, like this is what you let go. Um, you know, they could have left on great terms and, but you still want to beat them. And there's still that personal uh, touch to it. You know, it's like when you're, um, you know, playing against, you know, one of your high school teammates in, in college that used to play, you know, with mm-hmm. an actual in, in high school. Uh, I know I had that scenario come up a couple of couple times in in college where it was like, yeah, like we were buddies. It wasn't bad terms, but we went to different places and now we're playing each other and I hope we smoke you, you know. And so uh, whether it's for friendly, you know, or whether it's for, you know, something that's a little bit more, um, you know, personal and maybe has, you know, a negative to it. Like it's just another layer of motivation. Um, and we're going to see the same thing when we play Denver, you know, Joe Lombardi is over, over in Denver. Oh, so we're going to, we'll, we'll see him twice a year. And I know there's going to be, you know, like, Hey, like these guys, let me go, you know, I'm trying to beat you. And so we're already highly motivated, but you know, you find other extra little things to, to continue to, to heighten that motivation to want to beat your opponent for sure. Yeah. Don't want to leave these games with any regrets. And on that note, let's transition into the mailbag here real quick. Uh, Cause we asked for the people's, fantasy regrets and we got a ton of them Austin we won't talk about them all here uh but I want to hit on a few of these with you because like I said the people sent in some good ones um Carter R sent in to the ask Austin at yahoosports.com mailbag they traded what I thought were three quarters Sam Laporta and uh Robinson they just said Robinson uh for a dollar Travis Kelsey but Laporta is now the tight end overall one in fantasy football, and Kelsey is starting to look like an injury-prone guy in his 30s. Austin, he wants to know, did he make a mistake? <laughs> so he got he got Travis Kelsey. Got Travis Kelsey and sent away Sam Laporta, the rookie tight end for uh, yeah. the, the Lions. Yeah, you know, Laporta, man, he, is, he has been like a pivotal part in their offense, and it seems like he's going to be a continuous go-to for them over there. Uh, it's Jared Goff over there, right? Yeah, Jared Goff. Yeah, yeah for Jared Goff. Oh, that's ooh, that's a tough trade. Because the thing is, what I just said for Laporta, that is also Travis Kelsey for their offense over there, where he is a very pivotal part of that offense. And we have seen that proven, you know, for like, you know, as long as they've been over there. And so I would say that's a good trade. I would say it's a good trade. I would say, yes, Laporta is definitely coming into his own um, and setting his reputation for himself. But you went with someone who's been all reliable um, and has Patrick Mahomes throwing it to him. And so I definitely think that continues to help just have an offense that's you're expecting to score, um, you know, a good amount of points. And, you know, Kelsey is his red zone you know, favorite. Um, so I would say, yes, that's a good trade. Matt, what do you think? Well, they said they sent Laporta and Robinson. If it's oh, and Brian, and, and if Brian it's Robinson? Brian, well, they didn't say. They just said Robinson. You know, Brian always send in full names, right? Yeah, this makes a difference here because it does. If it's, it does. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, yeah, yeah. If it's if, if it's, it's if it's Bijan, then no, I'd say it's a bad trade. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's a bad if trade. If it's Bijan, it's a bad trade. You should feel bad and you should have some regret. <laughs> um, but if it's Brian Robinson, I think you're gonna, you're going to be all right. Here's another one here. Mr. Keeves says, hey, Austin and Matt, big fan of you guys. We're a fan of you. Uh, well, I could say I've been regretting all my picks as I've started 0-4. Mm. Uh, this is obviously sent before week five. I have to say my biggest regret was going Jamar Chase over Tyree Kill, or I would say Kittle over Kenneth Walker, especially considering all the solid late round tight ends. Now, Austin, it is uh, funny because this person sent this in before week five because we asked for it coming off the week four games. The players that they said they regretted Jamar Chase and George Kittle scored a combined six <laughs> touchdowns on Sunday. So a little bit right. of lesson here in patience, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's man, it's tough because where's the line of too much patience? You know, like 
man, uh, four weeks in, like, and it's not looking great. Is that time to almost, you know, start trying to get rid of them? Maybe a trade or something like that. And all of a sudden they pop off. And is that, was that a one-time thing or, you know, are they, you know, still struggling after that week? So there is a balance that you have to come, um, you know, come to, you know, agreements with yourself for is like, when is enough enough? Mm -hmm. uh, but you, here's the thing, you, you do have, you know, some players that have been um, credited, you know, with themselves, they built up that credit, credibility. Um, Jamar Chase, um, obviously, he, as he said, he's always open. The man's always open. And, you know, uh, with Burrow this last week, you know, throwing him seemingly every time and he making the, the most of it, you know, is one of those things where that's what we would expect. That's what we're used to seeing, you know, Burrow throwing it to Jamar. And then Kels, or Kittle is Kittle's interesting because I feel like what his like some of his biggest strengths are with the ball not in his hands, you know, him blocking mm -hmm. everybody like we just saw him, you know, do with Micah, uh, where it's like this dude's holding it down with basically the best. And, um, so he doesn't always get necessarily the recognition of, you know, being like a pass catcher or things like that, even though he still does it. And obviously he has scored three touchdowns. Um, and I, I don't know, he's pretty dynamic with the ball in his hands too, for being, you know, a big tight end. Um, one of the more dynamic guys, but I just think with Kittle, like that's still a solid choice. Um, but over, who would he say over? He took kill over who? Uh, Kenneth Walker, who obviously has had a pretty nice start to the season. Over right? Kenneth Walker. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. I think, I don't know about that one. Um, but yeah, so far, yeah. Kenneth Walker, obviously five touchdowns uh, on the ground. You know, it's just a positional yeah. value type thing there. Yeah, I, I exactly. Think I regret I would regret the Kittle over Walker one more than I would the Jamar over Tyreek one, even if though even though Tyreek's on guys on pace for literally like twenty two hundred yards is absolutely absurd. But um, I think that'll even out in the end. That one I wouldn't feel too bad on. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, this last one I want to just hit from social media uh, before we get our bold predictions in here in Austin and get out of here at Trash Us Pandas. What a name. After week three, I traded DJ Moore for Brees Hall. Obviously, they feel bad because DJ Moore just put up 45 freaking points on Thursday night. However, is this another instance, Austin, where this could this trade looks bad right now, but could it look better in like four weeks when Brees Hall is back cooking. And look, nobody knows this better than me. Receiver position is volatile, okay? that You got to ride the wave with these guys week to week. DJ Moore was kind of down here for a little bit. Then he was up here. Maybe he's like in the middle somewhere a couple weeks from now. Yeah. Ah, man, receiver, especially like in that his scenario where it's like, it's 30 points, it's two points, it's five points, it's seven, it's 15, right? I feel like receivers are, there's, there's more maybe upside potential um, for just bigger plays, but the the running backs, man, like I feel like we have the most consistency within fantasy, and that's why I think you see us, you know, getting drafted higher up, where it's like, hey, these guys are gonna get the ball. This is their guy. He's, if he's healthy, he's gonna get the ball twenty times a game. You know, so you're gonna get more production, more consistent production out of that. Even though DJ Moore might be able to, you know, pop pop off of forty five. Not saying a running back can't do that. We definitely can. I've had a couple right. more, a couple of those games in my in my journey. Maybe one actually. I don't want to overstretch there. We have um, to look that up. Yeah, we have to look we'll, it up. We'll I definitely, the, I've definitely had a four touchdown checkers. game on Sunday Night Football against the, the Steelers. I know I popped off that game. The thing is, like, the consistency within the running backs and especially what we just talked about today where um, this man is now kind of off of a pitch count and more so just kind of the flow of the game. You know, like, hey, you know, you when you're tired, come out. But other than that, get in there. Um, I think that's definitely going to be helping out uh, Brees. He, he got Brees or he traded away Brees? He traded DJ Moore for Brees Hall. So I think yeah, that I think Brees. that's going to end up being a good trade. I, I dude, I kind of think so too. And I know it's hard to say after DJ Moore has a forty-five point outing, but yeah, twenty-five touches for Brees Hall in Week Five. I think we're going to see a lot of that going forward. So I actually feel pretty good about you um, yeah. in this one. So I, I don't know. I think the lesson in all this is you don't always have to like. Sometimes there's small regrets, but for the most part, these major regrets it ends up working out in the end. I think it's a long season, man. I know it's tough to it doesn't happen right away, but sometimes you got to be a little patient with these guys. And sometimes it doesn't work out, and sometimes you should regret it because you made a bad choice. But here's the thing: you can't always see it. You can't always see it because you don't know how these guys are going to play. You know that's what makes it great. You know that's why you got to you know have some type of foresight and ha you got to stick to what your principles were. I'm drafting this guy because I expect this out of him, this out of him, this out of him. And that's how you evaluate yourself. Because if that didn't happen, now you know, okay, where was I off? You know, what did, what did I overshoot or undershoot, you know, for this player or that player? So have a plan, 
and then stick to the plan and then that at least lets you know if if you made a good made a good choice or not don't just be trading off an of impulse and like oh this guy hasn't scored in four weeks so you know i'm just gonna send him to somewhere else and get someone else maybe you know it's like okay well what's the scenario what's the logic behind this trade you know and what am i what can i get for this because it's you know, I'm I'm expecting these people that are in your league to not just want to take a guy who hasn't scored. Like, what is what's something that you can get from him? You know, maybe DJ Moore would be a good guy to trade right now. You know, he just had a 45 mm-hmm. point game. Maybe it's someone like, hmm, maybe I need a running back. Maybe I need a different, more consistent tight end or something like that. Where it's like, okay, maybe I can get this guy while he's hot. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Austin, yo, bro, you sound like a verified fantasy analyst right there. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Talking about maybe selling high on a guy right after his big performance. Yeah, Very fantasy know. analyst of you. We have a little phrase in the business. Uh, process over results. And that is exactly like if you made a good process, like you to make these picks and make these trades, like your process was sound. Um, you made it for the right reasons. You were looking at the snap counts. You were looking at the matchups. You were looking at, you know, trusting the talent of these players. And it just didn't work out. The results weren't there. It's okay because your process was good, and it can be a repeatable process. And you know, maybe next time you catch it, and you know, look, it's small sample size. Results are fluky. You sound like a, a real fantasy analyst, also. You're starting to get this thing, man. Hey, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Final thing we got to do here, Austin. Let's put your fantasy uh, fantasy analyst hat back on here. All right, Austin. Since we're teaming up this season with the first ever Toyota Grand Highlander, the perfect vehicle for making new memories. We're going to create some memories of our own in this segment we are calling Future Snapshots. Make me a bold prediction. Who is going to have a memorable performance this weekend? I'll go first, Austin. I want to talk about Drake London, Atlanta Falcons, wide receiver. Okay? We just talked about DJ Moore in the last segment. You know who DJ Moore tore up last week? The Washington Commanders. Um, I don't know what the hell Jack Del Rio is doing over there on defense, right? I've taken my pot shots at the Denver Broncos defense uh, so far on this show. You've heard me not so subtly say I'm a little confused by what they're doing on the back end there. I'm real confused at what's going on in the back end for the Washington Commanders. They've got this rookie cornerback, Emmanuel Forbes. You know, shout out to Emmanuel. I honestly feel kind of bad for him. They man him up. The week before, just straight man coverage on A.J. Brown. He gets torn to shreds because A.J. Brown is one of the best receivers in the NFL. The next week, they basically have him do the exact same thing with D.J. Moore. D.J. Moore goes over 200 yards, scores three touchdowns. Absolutely absurd. I don't even know if they'll just have Emmanuel Forbes man up with Drake London like that in, in, in tight man coverage or, or whatever. But I do feel really good about Drake London going against that defense, okay. that secondary with what's going on right now. I will say that Drake London has his first 100-yard game of the season and scores a touchdown. I really like the way Desmond Ritter, God God help me, I really like the way Desmond Ritter played last week, looked confident, especially in the fourth quarter, loved the way he was delivering the football, standing in the pocket, going through the reads, doing a little bit of that eye manipulation stuff I talked about. So I'm riding with Ritter. I'm riding with the Atlanta Falcons. I think Drake London goes over 100 yards and scores a touchdown here in nice. week six. Nice. All right. My bold predictions. The curse still lives on, Matt. The curse lives on. And I'm looking for someone to break the curse, damn it. It's like the Madden curse. Like, for, you know, you know that old thing they had. Um, mm-hmm. my bold prediction last week was, was Derek Henry was going to have over hundred all purpose yards and a touchdown. It didn't happen. Not but close. this week, this week, Deandre Swift will not let me down. He will not let me down. They are facing the jets and my bold prediction, not just because I have him on my fantasy team, but I need him to go out there and do his thing. I think he's going to have over hundred all purpose yards and a touchdown. Like, come on, DeAndre Swift. You go against the Jets. I think he's going to have a little bit, uh, some extra possessions because of that. Um, I think the Jets are still trying to get it figured out offensively. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's going to oppor- give an opportunity for the for the Eagles to, to have a day. And in particular, DeAndre Swift running the ball. I'll tell you what. I like your bold prediction, not just because of the extra possessions thing, but also because the Jets' defense, b- good overall. But Sneaky been giving up some big runs. Isaiah Pacheco on Sunday Night Football a couple weeks ago. This guy, Jaleel McLaughlin, 
on the uh, Broncos. He ripped off a couple nice uh, runs against them. Samaj P. Ryan had a nice receiving uh, play against them out of the backfield. So I like your bold prediction there. I like it, honestly, even more, though, that DeAndre Swift is on your fantasy team, Austin, and the curse now applies to him in the matchup. No, we will be playing I didn't even think other. of that. Oh, my God. So, uh, too late. Too late. It's on the, it's on the record. You, I you have officially filed it. Yep. Sorry. Uh, you've cursed oh. DeAndre Swift. See, <laughs> look at that. We're making memories every day here on Eckler's Edge. Those were oh, our future no. snapshots. Thanks again to Toyota and the first ever Grand Highlander. All I right, Austin. I should have known better. Yeah, you should have known better. Hell of an episode, though. Uh, that was great. Uh, a ton of fun. Looking forward to seeing you You're back on the field uh, very soon, my friend. And yes. uh, everything's looking good. Yes, likewise, man. Likewise. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to tearing it up against my own uh, team this week, for sure. Well, we can't wait to see. Uh, we can't wait to keep this... Beautiful little trophy yeah, right, yeah. Here. <laughs> right where it belongs. Yeah, get in, comfortable in this, there for a little house. bit because it's about to be gone. So make sure you take a picture of that. Hey, get a, get a screenshot here so we can remember this moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll all remember this moment, the last moment uh, it ever sat here. No, that is not the case. Anyway, <laughs> that's going to do it for us. Tomorrow is Thursday, heading into a full slate of NFL action. You know what that means. Dalton Del Don joins me for another episode of Stat Nerd Thursday, where we look at every stat you need to know for all 32 teams to help inform your fantasy decisions for week six. Until then, we're out.